today we're gonna do a little play sesh with the new Danessa Myrick's Groundwork Blooming Romance palette because this one is an interesting one. It definitely was a very anticipated launch. A lot of people were really excited about it, myself included, because this is such a unique concept of a palette. I feel like it's signature to Danessa Myricks. This is a play, kind of like a spring version and a play off, off of the Groundwork Defining Neutrals palette. And this one was such a neat palette. You could contour with this. Uh, you could shade the face, eyeliner, brows. You can do anything with this palette. So they launched the same formulations, but in these more springy colors. And I can tell you right away these are other than being the same concept very different colors so if you are into pinks and you have the defining neutrals this should not be an issue no repeat shades or anything like that so i love that the shades are so different and this is a contender for being a must-have go-to spring eyeshadow palette well not even eyeshadow that's the thing with this palette not even eyeshadow. I said it before and I'll say it again, Danessa Myricks is on a rise. I think they're gonna be a top brand for 2024, maybe 2025. I just think they're starting to come out with super innovative products that the public is loving. So you can pick this palette up right now at Sephora. It is $65. I believe you can pick it up obviously at the Danessa Myricks website and Beautylish as well. Now I do feel quite well versed to talk about this palette with you guys because with the Defining Neutrals, I actually attended an event with literally Danessa Myricks herself on stage teaching about these formulations, this palette and how to use it. And since the formulas are so similar, I think it's gonna translate over to this palette as well. So let me be honest with you guys. Here, here's the tea. This is my second time filming this video because I've got to be honest, the first time it didn't turn out how I wanted it to, I'm not good at using this palette. Even though I've done the research, I've gotten in-person training with this style of palette. I do struggle with this palette a little bit. I'm telling you right now, if you are a person that needs your hand held when it comes to makeup application, you need to be told exactly what to do with the product and where to put the product, this probably is not the palette for you. I would say, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm pretty good at being versatile and flexible with products. I don't know what it is about this palette. I'm just not that good at it. And I feel left out because I look at all of these other beautiful tutorials that people are doing with this palette and the looks don't turn out the same on me. I cannot get the vibrancy on the eyes. Like I really do feel like something's wrong with me. So I'm gonna show you <laughs> the best way for me to use this palette because I do like this palette, but I have to use it in my own way because my looks are not turning out like other people's looks. So if you do feel like something's off, something's missing, you are not alone. I really love this palette. I think it's such a cool, innovative product, but I've got to use it in my own way. Otherwise, I will be disappointed with the product because the looks that Danessa Merricks is doing, that lady is magical. My looks don't turn out like this. So yesterday when I did create a look, the look was absolutely beautiful, right? But it was a bit of a journey to get here. A lot of experimentation, a lot of going back and forth with product, and it happened on camera, but just like my words and what was happening weren't lining up. But the look was beautiful. I found the defining neutrals for me to be a little bit easier to work with because these colors are such natural tones and shadows and shades of the face. It just was easier to do what I wanted. Since this new one, the Blooming Romance, is so not super colorful, but it's more colorful. It is not the natural shades of the face necessarily. I did struggle a little bit more with this. But anyways, I find that especially when it comes to the eyes with this palette, simplicity is key. But we'll get into that. Let's talk about the formulations, how this palette works. I'm sorry, I just went on a really long break. <laughs> <laughs> but the big pans that you'll see, they are a velvet pomade formulation, which is signature, even though it's like a new signature, but a signature to Danessa Meyer because it has her signature ingredient, Upsolite, in here. And the best way I can describe this is like, it's a clay-like formulation in that it's moldable when you press into it. It's not like sticky or anything, but you know, putty clay 
think that kind of a hybrid between a cream product with some powder mixed in there. Not truly a powder dry down with these either, but you know, it is kind of a hybrid consistency feel. And then in these small pants here is her powder formulation. Now for me, I am a powder girl, especially when it comes to the eyes. I prefer the powders on the eyes in this palette. I would have liked bigger powder sizes because I'm such a powder girl. It can be difficult to get the brush in there. I'm a powder over pomade kind of gal. So I wish the roles were reversed here, but this pomade formula is so unique to the brand. I obviously know why they made it so big. This palette doesn't swatch well. I'm posting the swatches right here on my arm, but a live swatch didn't make sense for these because the velvet pomades are a sheer buildable formulation. And I think the pomades are quite sheer. And to build up the pigmentation, you do need to go in with the powder over top. These formulas are meant to work together. You can put powder down, pomade over, pomade down, powder over, however you want to get your desired effect. And I think yesterday what my issue was, was I ex was expecting the pomades to be more pigmented than they were. And so I just wasn't getting the vibrancy of my eyes. Really when you're going to get the color and that pop on the eyes that you're seeing on the Nessa Myricks Instagram is you do have to layer the powders over top. Those simply have more pigment. Okay, that being said, starting off with use, 10 minutes later, if you have a medium to deep complexion, you actually can color correct with this palette. I would do it with the pomade formulation. There's Desire here, and there is also Crush here if you need a pink color corrector. On my skin tone, these turn out a bit more vibrant than I would like. I still use them today in the demo, but it's not my personal preference for a color corrector, but you can absolutely make these work, especially medium to deep skin tones. The great thing about Danessa Myricks is she takes in consideration every single single skin tone so she's not going to create a product that's not going to work for her you know what I mean and you can even see that just in the range here from the light to the deep I'm also going to start off by actually brightening my under eye with the crush powder formulation now because the powder is so tiny you do have to take this out especially if you're using a larger brush just to not get any contamination but I will say they designed it well. You can easily take out the powder. But I'm using this light pink to kind of brighten and color correct. I actually really like this. I think it's so nice. You can use these formulations wherever you would like. And I think that's why, you know, if you need your hand held with makeup application, this can be quite overwhelming because you can use this to set your eyes. You can use this for blush, for lips, for eyes, for even eyebrows if you have pink hair. Anyway, so that added a fun pink color on the under eyes. We're going to get started with the eyes. Just going to pat down a little bit of Milani eye primer first. I have been loving this. I've been reaching for it over my Urban Decay and my Too Faced. So like I said, one thing that I've learned with this palette is simplicity is key, don't overthink it. I did a rather complex look which involved a ton of colors, shades, and layering yesterday. And it simply was not necessary. Rule of thumb here, the powders are more pigmented than the pomade. And the pomade does crease on me a little bit, to be clear. That happens, the eyelid, you know, it has a lot of movement, crease in the eyes. That's why just powder in general on the eyelid is better. So to start off, I am going to use a pomade and a fluffy blending brush. It's going to give a really smooth look to the eyelid. I'm going to go with a warm look because I did go so purple yesterday, like a fiery look, since I haven't used those shades yet. So I'm going to go in with Desire, and just to be clear, I used like Allure and Bliss and Evermore and Crush and Smitten yesterday. So we're going to go warmer today. I'm going to use Desire First Pomade. And just so you can see, you do get pigment with these. It's not like they're not pigmented, but these create the most beautiful wash of color. If you are looking for more pigment with the pomade, I would recommend going in with a synthetic flat shader brush, pressing the color down, and then going in with a clean blending brush. That way you're going to get the most amount of pigment possible but still able to get that blend because these pomades are a flexible formulation. And this is giving the prettiest peachy hue as the background here. Love that. I'm going to stick my BK A502 into Adorn here. 
pomade. This is a reddish, fiery shade. And I'm still using the pomade, but you'll see how easy this is to work out. The depth doesn't necessarily match up as much on the eye because I didn't use a shader brush. I'm using a blending brush for application, but it's not going to get too super dark even with a shader brush in my opinion. Just from what I've experienced, I'm just using windshield wiper motions. Next I'm going to take this Bling Brush E16. This is more of that synthetic flat shader brush style and I'm going to stick my brush into Love Sick, which is the deepest red color. And I'm gonna pat it out here for the most amount of depth. So you'll see what I mean. I can get this level of depth if I go into the powder, but I just wanted to show you what that would look like. I'm taking a My Kit Co. 1.16 brush and I'm going to work this out and blend it into the look. But this is why yesterday I was struggling to get the looks that I was seeing online. The depth just wasn't matching up with the pomades. That's the point of learning and practicing. And that's why I'm filming this a second time so I can pass this information along to you. Taking a Refer 15 mini brush and I am now going into Lovesick Powder. And I'm going to circle this in the outer corner to give us that fiery red depth to the eye. And you see what I mean instantly, that powder on top of the pomade really adds the depth. Now the pomade doesn't leave a sticky feel on the under eyes, so it blends over easy. It's not going to stick or anything, but lesson learned from yesterday. You want depth, you want pigment, powder. But you'll see where the pomades, where I love to use them for a full face-ish look. Taking Love Sick Pomade on my Kitco 1.16, and I'm going to run this along the lower lash line. I really like these pomades for under eye because they're so thin. And then a little bit of lovesick powder. Lower lash line. I didn't mess with this lovesick yesterday. I'm loving the fiery warm look that I'm getting. Now for this, I like to keep the pomade formulation away, especially from the inner part of the lid, because I find that this is the first place that this formula will crease. Oh, I just saw, like, I really need to blend this. <laughs> Whoopsie. I do think, especially with the lighter shades, that the pomade and the powder do layer well together. I think it'll be fun to put some of Desire powder all over the center of my eyelid like so, and see how you're getting good pigment with that. I just think it's easier to have a thinner layer over the eyelid, since that's where my crease is. So it'll wear better. You know what, I'm just gonna put that all over. And then I want to do a smoky lash line. I'm taking just a Kaleido synthetic pencil brush, and I'm going into XO. And I'm running this along the lower lash line for some smoke. Now, even with a angled liner brush that's really stiff, I find that with these pomades, they don't give me the dark line that I want. So for a smoky liner look, I start off with the pomade as the background. You can use these pomades in the waterline too if you're going for that kind of smoky look. Since they're more of a cream formulation. They're great in that way if you needed some inspo. So I've pressed this along the lash line. I'm gonna clean off my brush. Now it's more clean and I'm just going to blend it into my lash line. Now I'm taking an angled brush. This one is from Lottie London and I'm going into XO powder. And this will give me the depth that I'm looking for in terms of eyeliner. And then you have the background of the pomade to keep it looking smoky. Then we'll do a little liner as well. Okay, and I'm gonna clean up the liner a little bit with some concealer and pop on my lashes. 
Now, one of my favorite things to do with this palette is blush. I think that these velvet pomade formulations were made for the cheeks because they're like a cream formulation, so they're good on dry patches. They give a little bit more life, but they're not like a cream formulation that's too dewy. Like, it kind of does set down a little bit, so they have really fantastic longevity. Very easy to use, maneuver. So I'm gonna show you a couple different blushes. I'm gonna start off with Desire. Now, to not have any cross-contamination here with the brush, because these are smaller pans, I'm pulling out Desire Pomade. And if you're really oily, you can also set with the powder side over top. So you can do that as well if you really need that longevity and you're oily. I don't need that, so I'm just gonna go in with the pomade, but the powder really doesn't really change anything of how the blush looks, other than maybe make it a little bit more vivid, depending on how much you add. But this Desire shade is such a pretty peachy tone on me. I love it. It's a little bit on the sheer side on me, but with the darker shades in this palette, you can get pigment on the cheeks for being a blush. Like on the eyes, you know sometimes I want more pigment, but on the cheeks, these give the perfect amount of pigment. So that was easy to work out, didn't disrupt the base underneath. I do have setting powder on my under eyes and a powder bronzer, and that didn't mess anything up. This shade is beautiful. Next up, I want to show you Lovesick Pomade because it looks a little scary on my skin tone. I'm going to have to use a really light hand with this. I'm going to use just a little bit on the brush and I'm gonna keep it more towards the back of my cheek. This is more for like medium complexions, deeper complexions. So I went really light, but you can see I'm still able to work that color into my cheek and not have it look obnoxious. Kind of keeping it lower, almost as like a contour shade. So that added the prettiest reddish burgundy color to the cheek. Oh, I love these as blushes so much. This is my favorite way to use this palette because blush tones were missing from the Defining Neutrals palette. You could do a lot with the Defining Neutrals, but you could not really blush. And that's when this palette comes in. Okay, I'm using Adorn now. This one is like a brickish kind of red, and I'm gonna use it on this cheek. So you can get some pigment with it if you press hard enough into the pan. So this is not a go-to blush color for me. It's a little deep on me, but I can make it work with using a light hand. This is a BK 109. I'm just gonna leave it at that for the blush today, but that one looks really nice with the eye look. Now, rule of thumb for my skin tone, I'm gonna be more so keeping towards the top here and then deeper skin tones, more so towards the bottom, but I've been loving these as blushes. now. To finish up this review, you can use these on the lips as well. There's a beautiful lip swatch tutorial on Danessa Myrick's Instagram. I will say though, they were not looking like they look on her, on me. Exfoliate the heck out of your lips because these pomades will cling on to dry patches on the lips. I lip scrubbed twice. We'll see if that's enough today because wasn't looking too hot yesterday. I'm gonna start off with the My Kit Co Expert Line and Define brush. You can see it's like a tiny little brush like this. These last really long as lip liners, I want you guys to know. And I'm gonna use Love Sick as my lip liner, pomade of course. And I'm using this just on the outskirts of my lips. I don't know that this is gonna replace lip products for me, but they're good in a pinch. So that is the Love Stick as the liner. And you could put this all over the lips if you wanna. Now, I've been trying to decide if it's easier to use my fingers to apply like lip color in the center or a brush. Can't say that I've come to that decision because let me show you. I'm going to use a little bit of Adorn here, and I'm going to use my finger. And I feel like with my finger, you only get a sheer layer of color. And what's leaving me confused is on the Instagram that I saw, it was a thick layer of color, really pigmented. I just don't get that with this. I get a soft 
wash of color which is very very pretty don't get me wrong but i just thought i would get more but with that adorn shade it actually gave some good color and with my lips double scrubbed it's not looking as dry today fantastic i was hoping i would get better results today and then i'm going to use some of desire pomade and i'm going to pop that in the center of the lips see it's not really showing up that much it's like for lips i do just generally like more of a cream style formulation these are you know a unique formulation but that lighter color instantly made my lips look really dry clung to those dry patches for me it's definitely possible to use these on the lips these lasted really long on my lips yesterday i will say that but they're not the most flattering on the lips as like the only lip product for me how i would use these on the lips more so is with a regular lip liner putting that over the majority of my lips and then topping with a little bit of one of these colors like either that i use on the eye or my blush for a monochromatic look but for the lips this is not the star of the show for me so i hope with this video that i was able to help lead you in how to best use this palette and its capabilities i think for myself moving forward using it uh not doing any demos or anything i'm probably sticking to powders on the eyes pomades on the cheeks and then pomades on the center of the lips paired with a lip liner but this palette i mean is fantastic for getting a monochromatic look it is very versatile now am i a blooming romance or a defining neutrals girl for me the defining neutrals has more versatility with how i like to use it but i think blooming romance is not to be with a nose turned up at especially for the spring i will reach in this palette literally as a blush palette because that's how much i love this formula on the cheeks so if you pick up this palette let me know your thoughts definitely head over to Danessa Myrick's Instagram to check out some inspo if you weren't sure what kind of looks you wanted to create and watch a lot of other tutorials from other creators some people are so creative with the ways that they're able to use this palette you know I'm I have always been more of the like everyday wearer event glam kind of makeup in the more traditional sense so i'm not really creative when it comes to looks danessa marix definitely has an audience of the most creative people so it really is inspiring to see the looks that they were able to create with this palette so i hope you guys enjoyed this review and found it helpful let me know your thoughts on this palette down below did you pick it up are you feeling how i feel about it did you come across any difficulties are you loving it let me know down below and i'll catch you guys in the next one Bye guys, have a good one.